talk about it. <laughs> we just in- intuitively <laughs> knew. That's what. <laughs> I was just gonna say gay people. <laughs> we got that gay connection. Oh. <laughs> I have to pull everything back up now. Hello and welcome to You Disgust Me, a bi weekly bisexual podcast of yuck. Where every week me, Marin, and my bestie Francis <laughs> Tell each other stories or facts or whatever the fuck to try and gross each other out. So gross. Ostensibly, we're trying to get the other person to tap out, but we'll see. We both have pretty strong uh, resistance to the gross, so buckle in. I don't like moths, but that's off the table. (laughs) Maybe (laughs) I shouldn't tell them that, then they're going to email me moths. You know. You can't get much worse than what I bombard you with on the daily, so. Francis just messages me moss all the time they're so pretty and she's like isn't this sad cat <laughs> it's not actually it looks like a demon one of the kiddos that i work with brought a tiny little moth up to me while i was working the other day and he was, thought of me yes and my friend that i'm always trying to introduce you to was working with me Mm. and she was like oh my gosh that's gross <laughs> I was like oh, it's you too you need to meet my friend Marin." oh my god so it shall happen Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> disgusting <laughs> what's happened since last time we recorded so much so much i'm not in school anymore <laughs> yeah yeah let's let's fill in on that i listened to the episode to make the video and the beginning was like School is so hard. And I'm like, no, I'm not <laughs> in school. I'm taking a semester off, which sounds like I'm in a crisis whenever I tell someone. <laughs> I know it feels awkward, but it's like the best thing to do to reorient yourself. I just stick with your stick to your guns, as it were. I think it's normal. It is. It absolutely is. I mean, and what is normal anyway? True. The system is messed up. A setting on a dryer. <laughs> totally. Any other <laughs> catchphrases from Hot Top? <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. No longer am I a part of academia, but I never was. <laughs> well, you were. I really was. You were entrenched in the biology realm, always coming up with awesome grossness. I guess. Yeah. So where are you going to find your hot, gross stuff now? I have a list. And the I usually just steal from other podcasts. That's the <laughs> secret of this <laughs> podcast. This is a cl- conglomerate of other podcasts. Okay. Well, I might have to start doing the same because it's kind of hard to find gross things that are not like culturally insensitive. Yeah. That I don't know that are already covered, you know. There's also PBS documentaries. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, PBS. I'm really into doomed expeditions right now <laughs> awesome <laughs> doomed expeditions yeah that would be kind of gross huh so that's a preview of what's to come <laughs> oh this <no>. season <laughs> i just think they're kind of sexy and homoerotic oh you know like lord of the rings kind of stuff what if we were stuck in antarctica and we were both boys we're both girls like would you <laughs> what would you eat would you eat me would i eat you <laughs> I don't think the gender really matters if it comes to survival, does it? But would you? But what if we were both boys? I think I would probably die. And it was the 1800s and we were both boys. I don't think my instinct to live is that strong. I think I would definitely just give up. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) You had to go first this week. I went first last week. Oh. Yeah, it's a trading game. Ah. I don't know if I ever mentioned that part. <laughs> well, okay. Unfortunately, I forgot to do a today and yuck. So you can go first on that. Ah, ah. <laughs> and then I'll go first on the story. Oh, you're searching rapidly for I one? was. Yes, okay. you caught me. My today and yuck is not gross. <laughs> um, I find it weird and uncomfortable. But I just really wanted to hear... This is like a normal podcast Mm. topic. I just wanted to hear your opinion. Yes. I think this is probably really normal. Uh But I have so many issues, like deep-seated issues that I'm like, what the fuck? (laughs) 
I'm ready. Girlfriend draws up 17 page contract for a man she's been dating two weeks, including that he pays for everything. This is from The Sun, so they like made it really like, you know, tabloidy. But <laughs> as you read it, it's like pretty normal, actually. But I'm like, what the fuck? 17 pages? 17 pages is where you get me. Yeah. And him paying for everything is also where you get me. I mean, it's good to know what you're getting into in a relationship, and expectations are important. Communication is important. That would not be the relationship for me. Yeah. And I would definitely say, what the fuck, and goodbye. Because my therapist keeps telling me about boundaries, but my boundaries is no 17-page relationship contracts. No. (laughs) (laughs) That's a lot. (laughs) I wonder what she does for a living. Um... Well, he's pre-law, which doesn't mean anything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no. Which means he's in college. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and probably in debt already. Yeah. So Annie Wright met her boyfriend, Michael Head. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I bet he had a hot, nice time in middle school. In October last year, after deciding he was, quote, her person... I already don't like them. (laughs) You're my person. (laughs) They agreed to be exclusive soon after. There's a picture of her with a boxer. Sidebar, I don't like boxers. Oh. I was attacked by a boxer when I was a kid. What about... Oh, I'm sorry. That's the only dog... Well, there's a lot of dog breeds I don't like, but that's the only irrational dog fear I have. So, a dog walks up to your house on Halloween dressed as a moth and it's a boxer (laughs) it's not like that it's like in a vet clinic i have to hold it and Mm. they're like angry and i'm like it's gonna bite me what the breed (laughs) i know they'll bite me (laughs) um determined to make the relationship work after having her boundaries crossed in a previous toxic relationship 21 year old annie joke they should write down their terms and conditions for dating And law student Michael eagerly agreed. See, here it says he's a law student, but other lawyer, it said it was, he was a pre-law student. So what's Mm. the truth? Shortly after, they sat down and read out their terms, including (laughs) asking for a romantic gesture once every two weeks. Really keeping the fire alive. Uh, Like, you're expecting it. It takes the... Spontaneity. You have it. to yeah. do something fun. For that me. wouldn't work for me. And working out at least five times a week alone. Hello. That doesn't seem like she's giving him any autonomy. Like that that seems like her toxic relationship to me. <laughs> Other clauses included no silent treatment and him f- paying for date nights. I, mean, I think she has issues and she thinks this is a healthy way of dealing with it. And it's really like weird. It's <laughs> probably not. <laughs> it's my guess. Like it's good to set boundaries, but these are not reasonable boundaries. I don't think. Hmm. Cause my therapist keeps telling me about, did I already say that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I don't <laughs> think these are reasonable. <laughs> no, no, I don't think so either. She thinks this is the key to their relationship success and suggested they're going to give each other a yearly review. They're going to sit down and have a y- review with a PowerPoint, probably. <laughs> I don't know. On like, their anniversary. I, I am I'm very into deep talks with with partners, but having a like making it feel like work. Yeah, I don't like usually when you have like a relationship talk, it ends in like sex, you know, like if it went mm-hmm. well. I don't feel like you could have sex after signing a contract. Yeah. Yeah. And where does it stop? Like, do you get a review on how the sex went too? (laughs) My God. Do they have (laughs) terms and conditions for sex? Do you think? (laughs) Must have four orgasms. Oh my God. (laughs) I bet she says that. Um, Here's the worst thing about it. She said, we treat our relationship like a business trans business interaction. Hmm. We deal with conflict like partners in business would. We sit, we sit down and treat it more like we're partners in life. And love is an added bonus. Okay, well, if it works. It wouldn't work for me, but... I think she's the female Patrick Bateman. <laughs> <laughs> Could be. 
could be. <laughs> okay. So I'm glad I wasn't the only one that was like, huh? <laughs> yeah, no. You are not the only one. Everyone try and set boundaries. Yes. That's what I've been trying to do this year. It sucks. But not like that. Not like this. Not like this. <laughs> what have your boundaries been like? Um, or is, it, is that too personal? Yeah, my boundaries are like fucked up. <laughs> well, see, you can set a boundary with me right now saying I don't want to talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> Totally. Let's sign this contract and review it in a year. Ugh. That sounds like a nightmare. <laughs> but she's like, I don't like, I want to know exactly what I'm getting into with a relationship. Like, I don't want to, but I'm like, isn't that kind of fun? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to, like, not know what's happening. <laughs> she must be really traumatized of, on whatever she went through prior, but that seems like a, a very dramatic reaction. I <coughs> just called a woman dramatic and i feel really guilty about what that. a bitch <laughs> <laughs> that ties into my story perfectly <laughs> so uh to segue ever so gracefully did you find it today in nook or no i didn't i tried real hard okay. i'm sorry i let you down that's fine so story time i was involved in 4-h growing up loved it and one of our community projects included helping emergency responders train by pretending to need varying types of treatments Uh. in a drill. So they still do these. Some of our actor friends volunteer in them. And so I was like 11 or so, and I was so excited to do something cool, like have my arm stabilized in an ambulance or, you know, get some of the equipment. Be a zombie. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. (laughs) I wanted to to do something cool. And the affliction that I drew was probably out of a hat was – hysteria when was this i it was like mid 90s maybe like yeah it was probably <laughs> smack in the middle of the 90s and um dated and i had no idea what to do like i i kind of waved my arms a- around a little and <laughs> like a half committed to like being confused and mumbling a little bit <laughs> like i it was my best work um so I was just like really disappointed and later like really sad about the whole situation. <laughs> so weird. And the the use of the word, like I, I had never really come across that before. And so the word hysteria actually comes from the Greek word Greek word hystera, which means uterus. And in ancient Greece it was believed that the uterus would just ping pong around the body causing a variety of problems and the offending uterus could be coaxed back into the appropriate position by smelling something bad or it has a nose yes <laughs> yeah apparently is that what the fallopian tubes are yes i um i think that's technically i only correct. got one week of anatomy before i dropped <laughs> out <laughs> so if it was too high in the body that you, you could smell something terrible and it would pop back down a position and put like good smelling stuff near the vagine or vice versa if it was <laughs> too low. So what's considered good smelling to a vagina? I I would imagine the same things that we consider good smelling, like flowers, okay. maybe. I don't know. Do they have vanilla? By the way, vanilla. That's another great topic. I need to Imagine write walking by a fl- floral shop and they're like flowers for you and your vagina. <laughs> <laughs> I th- yes, I think that needs to happen. This was a theory backed by Plato. Yeah, and he has great ideas. And among other philosophers that we, you know, have, are highly regarded, just even in modern society. So others thought that these were ailments due to a buildup of female seed or menstrual blood. Um, so heterosexual intercourse was a suggested treatment, as was stimulation from a helpful midwife. In the case of oh. unmarried women or nuns. Oh. Get into that. Uh, Sounds like a movie I've watched. Nun pleasuring um, sect of the mid- midwifery. Have you seen those movies? An, a nun. Those documentaries? The, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So people thought that hysteria was diagnosable as a physical condition caused by defects in the womb. And therefore only women could become hysterical or now as we know them or we need to call them the persons with 
uh, uterus or persons who uh, menstruate. So, but we're using so true. We're using the term women because that's what's in the the research. But we know better now. This also is a fake disease. <laughs> this is also a fake disease. Disclaimer. So these women would have excess emotion, and so this fake disease Couldn't was be me. I know this. Uh, this fake disease was actually presenting like anxiety attacks or like severe oh, depression. That's maybe it is me. That was the hysteria. <laughs> and they would just clump all these things into them. And it could also include like seizures. And they just thought that women were freaking out from their uterus popping around Flapping their body. Around. Yeah. Like a bat. Yeah. So Sigmund Freud studied hysteria. My, fi- my best <laughs> friend, Sigmund. <laughs> we knew it was going to come to him. Um, if for he studied hysteria for thirty five years, studied it mm-hmm. really. I'm yes, well. I'm and sure he did. <laughs> <laughs> and concluded that hysteria comes from females. Recognizes they have. Oh, okay. Sorry. I know what you're gonna say, and I don't want you to say it. <laughs> he concluded that hysteria comes from when females recognize that they have no penis, <laughs> and have been. It has been theoretically castrated from their bodies and so then they become hysterical because the penis is gone because i want to bring him to today yeah (laughs) yeah yeah no there's Um, some there's some documentaries i wanted to watch so his suggestion was get married and have sex that was his rx for that carol Mm-hmm. So if marriage and sex was not an option, other therapies had been pioneered, including uterine massage. <laughs> Anytime women came to a doctor with depression, anxiety, irritability, or any number of other symptoms, which for me that is pretty regular, especially you know, every weekday. I don't know. Like whenever I I'm on my cycle, like, I feel like my truest self, and I don't want to suppress that with (laughs) anything. It's like, I have the power to say what I want to say now. But anyway, they might be prescribed a pelvic finger massage, and Mm. doctors would perform enough of these (laughs) that it inspired the development of the electric stimulator, which was the fifth home electronic invention ever created. Before... The vacuum, the electric iron, and the electric flying frying pan. Or flying pan. Frying pan. Flying pan. <laughs> <laughs> so hysteria was essentially a catch-all term for everything that men didn't understand about women's bodies. And if a physician didn't know what was happening, it was often attributed to the devil as well. Um, so even the name female, so it comes from fey, faith, and, or not female, as Feminism, feminist. So, oh. fee being or fe being faith, and then menism being less than, mi- like minus. Oh. So, uh, one of less faith. Okay. Is feminine. Uh, okay. Which, sure. Yeah. <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> so it was deleted from the Diagnostic Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders in 1980. So that means... It was not supposed to be there when you were doing your thing. It was 15 years later, at least. <laughs> and these were paramedics. They who diagnosed you with it. They just said she... She's mm. she's totally got her hoo-ha bopping around at the age of 11. And that was used to describe patients and train responders in the 90s. <laughs> that disgusts me. Um, disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me... Marin, what disgusts you T- this week? Yes. What disgusts me? Yes. First of all, I thought that was a great story. <laughs> I definitely paid attention the whole time <laughs> and I was focused. <laughs> Laser eyed. <laughs> it's the end of a long week, folks. Yeah. It's been a weird, weird week. Mm-hmm. So we've all been a little melancholy lately. Mm-hmm. We're H- not hysterical. Hysteric. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily... For all of us, mm-hmm. I've found a new treatment option that's okay. guaranteed to work. Okay. Is it a pelvic massage? Well, yeah, that <laughs> does work. <laughs> <laughs> all you need is a small sliver dissolved in water or wine. I know everybody loves wine. <laughs> I okay. can't get enough wine. 
Okay. A sliver of what? Are you a wino? A, wi- a wino? <laughs> I, I enjoy wine every once in a while, but it's not my go-to beverage. Yeah. And you'll be, if you have a small sliver in water and wine, you'll be happy as a medieval monarch in no time. Oh. What is it, you ask? What is it? <laughs> it's a ball of hair from a goat's stomach. <laughs> I had to. Oh, gross. Okay. Are you going to tap out? No. <laughs> Bees wars mm-hmm. were a common treatment from the 11th century to the 18th throughout Europe and what is now called the Middle East. Mm-hmm. Medicinal bezoars are mostly used as poison antidotes and were literally mar- worth more than their weight in gold. So, medically, is there any benefit that could possibly accidentally have been experienced, like an absorption of some of that anti, or the, of some of that poison. Well, that's what they thought. Okay, but it it literally. Can't. I'll get to that. Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> if you were rich enough to afford a bezoar, you were probably rich <laughs> enough to be at risk of being poisoned, or at least rich enough to be paranoid about being poisoned. You had to buy goat hair. A ball of goat goat hair, hair from the stomach. From their stomach. It couldn't be human hair. They got it from goats. I don't think they knew humans could do it. Because hmm. humans, like, it's a specific set of circumstances that happens. <laughs> Queen Elizabeth even wore a bezoar set in a silver ring. Ew. Bezoar jewelry was believed to be healing from simple proximity because of the miasma theory of disease in the plague days. So it was thought that the bezoars would soak up the stinky plague air as well as whatever poison you'd ingested. <gasps> Wishful thinking. <laughs> Gross. So maybe if you had one in your bathroom, it, that might uh, that might work. I don't mm. know. <laughs> you know, it's it's funny because like we run our fingers through our hair, we play with other people's hair, but like the instant that I can feel a hair that has fallen from my head that is just half an inch <laughs> lower the way. than like, the rest of my <laughs> hair. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like there's a moth on me. Mm. And it's, it's, it's freaking, yeah. And like a wad of hair is no different chemically in your mouth. Oh. I'll get to that. But imagine eating hair. Like if I get like mm. cat hair in my mouth, I want to kill myself. Mm-mm. Do you ever um, get hair in your mask? I would get fur like on the other side of my mask sometimes at work. Did you always have the opportunity to take it off and take it out? I would, yeah, I would freak out and take it off. <laughs> <laughs> I've had situations where my body is busy enough that I've found a hair in my mask and I have pulled it into my m- mouth Ugh. because I didn't want it on my face. <laughs> 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 That's and then really upsetting. And then threw it away later. I mean, not later, like Spit it 30 out. seconds. But Ugh. all of it was disturbing. But I just, I can't stand hair in my upper lip region. Mm-hmm. Okay. So maybe not a mustache for you. Not a visor either. So if this sounds like snake oil or a cure-all, mind your business. Mm-hmm. Um <laughs> A bezoar was famously used to save Ron Weasley's life in the worst Harry Potter movie. <laughs> um, I think it was Wait. the one where Dumbledore dies. I thought that one sucked. Oh, okay. So that's... Remember it's the one where he has that like girl falling all over him? Half, Half-Blood Prince, I think, maybe? Yeah, I think it was that one. I thought that one sucked. Yeah, it was rough. It was just bad. It was a bad movie. Yeah. I didn't really care for The Order of the Phoenix either. I like that movie. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm talking specifically about the book. Harry was really sullen in that one. I just didn't like You the read name. the books? Dude, Loser. I was a nerd. Like, I, I totally grew up with them, even though I was, like, 16 when they came out. It's fine. The movies are two hours long. Psh, who's the smart one here? I <laughs> love the movies as well. It's so called, It's called Saving Time. <laughs> There's a bug on here. It was the cord. <laughs> I got freaked out. <laughs> I've been a hair. In the 1500s, famous, I've never heard of him, but famous surgeon Ambrose <laughs> Pare mm-hmm. sought to debunk bezoars. Mm-hmm. Um, King Charles the Fourth, 
I'm not good with Roman numerals. Is it I V? I X. Oh, so that would be nine. Nine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good with That's Roman okay. numerals. <laughs> okay. We don't use them. Had sentenced one of his cooks to death for stealing two silver plates. Okay. Kind of a harsh man. Yeah. Um, if the cook survived being poisoned and cured by Pere, he would be pardoned. Oh. Emphasis on survived mm-hmm. being. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the cook died after seven hours. Oh. And Pere concluded that bezoars are bullshit. It's nice that they tested it <laughs> on a human. <laughs> Oh, man. But this did little to reduce the popularity of bezoars. The demand for bezoars inspired conquistador Pedro de Osma to search the innards of animals in the Americas for the precious commodity. After reading a book from Spanish physician Nicolas Monardes called Medicinal History of the Things that are Brought from our Occidental Indies that are and are useful in medicine. Rolls off the tongue. <laughs> New York Times bestseller. <laughs> in the new land, mm-hmm. new land. Mm-hmm. Can you hear my? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was not discovered before that. Diosma, Diosma, um, found bezoars in. Oh, I should have looked up how to pronounce this animal's name. Vicunas, guana. Llamas and alpacas further justifying colonization of the area. Huh. So bees wars led to colonization. <laughs> Cancel bees wars. <laughs> so such a hot commodity. There are different kinds of bees wars besides hair. In fact, most of the medicinal bees wars on the market back in the day were fake. Made out of what? As many as nine out of ten were man made. Man-made bezoars called Goa stones were made by Jesuits. They were formed by grinding up sapphires, rubies, pearls, musk, ambergris, which is like whale, whatever, sperm. I think that's whale sperm, isn't it? I don't know. Hmm. And gold with a small amount of real bezoar. And then made into a paste by adding rose water and shaped into an egg and polished. So they're like so (laughs) expensive. Yeah. And... Oh, man, to imagine that they were sold for even more than they were worth for something that didn't even work. <laughs> I'm kind of speechless. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I don't even know how. The general definition of a bezoar nowadays is, quote, a mass of undigested material found in the gastrointestinal tract of a human or animal. Cats get them a lot. Well, not like they don't get like such compacted all the time but like sometimes cats will have to get surgery because they'll have hairballs so like mm. i guess it would be a bezoar mm-hmm. yeah because they can't pass it um bezoars can sit in the body without doing harm or being noticed but sometimes they cause abdominal pain nausea or more serious symptoms like obstruction of the stomach or bowel yeah, yeah. i bet <laughs> how do you get it down your throat without choking like I just a know. hair like a single hair I know. <laughs> so I've been thinking about all day. I'm like, how do you swallow hair? I can't get past that. But I don't know. They're usually found in the stomach or intestine, believed to be caused by delayed or slowed digestion. Our digestive system is always moving things through from one section to the next. But if something large enough stays in the stomach for too long, it can form into a bezoar when it comes into contact with other undigested material. So it's like... A dung beetle rolling up a ball. I don't know. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. it's like an avalanche. Like, <laughs> it's a sushi roll of grossness. That video game where he rolls stuff out. What was that game? I don't know. <laughs> it was a while ago. <laughs> there are six major classes of bezoar classified based on the material they're made of. Do you want to guess? I'm, I'm confused as to why this is an area of study. It happens. It, it doesn't seem useful but oh, okay. Well, it's so not like an area of study. Now. It's just like um, sometimes people get stuff stuck in them and we oh, have to take it out. Okay. Like it's just like a gastric gotcha. surgeon's area of like knowledge. Gotcha. There, the, this isn't the six different bezoars that we could use for different ailments. No, gotcha. It's okay. not. Yeah, it's not helpful anymore. It's just like this is a the hi- this is the type of stuff people get stuck in them. Okay. I um take a guess. A quarter. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That falls into one category. Okay. 
So number one, well, I don't. This isn't like ranked. Mm-hmm. So the first one would be trico beeswurfs. Trico means hair in mm-hmm. any situation. Yep. Potentially weighing as much as several kilograms. I think I got this from a British website. These beeswurfs are usually composed of hair and food particles, often occurring in individuals suffering from trichotillomania. Eating your own hair. Well. <sighs> Trichotillomania is actually just pulling your hair. Oh, okay. Trichoma- trichophagia is eating your hair. Gotcha. I'll get more into that. Okay. Another kind, which is, this is really weird, and maybe I should have done a whole thing on this, um, is diospirobezoars, a unique variety of phytobezoar resulting from eating persimmons. Okay. So if you eat too many persimmons, they might get stuck. Mom. Um. I've never eaten a persimmon. I don't eat. I haven't either. Is that a, like a seed of some sort? It kind of looks fruit? like an orange pomegranate. Okay. I don't know if it is like an orange pomegranate. Interesting. Maybe if it's a native green one. I don't know. Hmm. Maybe we should try and see who can get a beeswar first and eat <laughs> as many persimmons. <laughs> Tune in next time. Last one, the beeswar is a rotten egg. <laughs> Um, there's pharmacobeeswars, which mm-hmm. is undissolved medication. Okay. You can see that happening. Mm-hmm. Phytobeeswars, which is indigestible fibrous vegetable matter, cellulose, tannins, or other plant material. Mm. This is an extremely common type of beeswar. Um, they account for nearly 40% of all beeswars, diagnosed beeswars. Oh. So you could go to the... Don't eat vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> you could go to the doctor and say... Y- you would be diagnosed to say you have a bezoar. Like My tumby hurts. <laughs> they say you have a tumor of veggies. Would they use the, the term bezoar? They, yeah, they would probably say you have a phytobezoar. Okay. Yeah, it's like it's a just, medical term. It seems so an- antiquated. Yeah. So it's just interesting to me that that term has stayed. I think it's just like a specific kind of foreign body. Yeah. A lactobezoar. Com- these are composed of milk protein and mucus. Mm. Um, disgusting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, foreign body beezors, plastic, polystyrene foam cups, even oh. parasitic worms can all be found in beezors. I wonder if so. Okay. That's where your quarter would go. <laughs> so would that would that also fall under like plastics? Plastics would fall under that mm-hmm. type, and like Teflon. Y- yeah. <laughs> Not otherwise specified as foreign body. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of a catch-all. Yeah. And so is a beezor. It's a catch-all. That's what I want. I wonder if people who eat, like, couches, I wonder if they get beezors. I'm sorry? You know the people who, like, eat their couch and stuff? No. You don't watch, like, My Strange Addiction? No. People, like, eat, like, really weird stuff. I wonder if this happens. <sighs> My mouth is really dry talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> I feel sick. <laughs> Beezoars are most often affect most often found in older adults or children. Um, infants are most at ric- risk for lactobezoars, mm-hmm. which makes mm-hmm. sense to me. Yeah. But trichobezoars, the star of the show today, mm-hmm. in humans are often seen in young women slash teenage girls with a psychiatric disorder known as trichophagia or Rapunzel syndrome. Rapunzel. <laughs> I, know. I didn't know that <laughs> this is what you're talking about mm-hmm. last episode with the girl who had the massive hairball in yes. her stomach yes body focused repetitive behaviors like pulling hair are believed to be related to ocd oh. i love an opportunity to pull out my abnormal psych textbook that i used one semester and never again <laughs> <laughs> But according to Dr. Catherine Phillips, a professor of psychiatry at Alpert Medical School at Brown University, (laughs) pulling hair is, quote, purely behavioral and not related to intrusive thoughts or obsessions. Hmm. So the difference there is like the classic example of like someone turning a light on off, like on and off five times. It's Mm -hmm. like, if I don't do this, my family will die, like that kind of thing. Sure. But pulling your hair out and eating it is just like... You're not thinking about it. You're just doing it. It's more of a it's, habitual. Yeah. Wow. Well, there's pattern. not like a specific reason you're doing it. Mm-hmm. Trichotillomania, which is just hair pulling, is often seen as a self-soothing mechanism for anxiety. Um, it's possible trichophagia is a similarly soothing act, which is no offense, but how can you... The hair going down your throat. I can't, mm, 
that's not soothing. <laughs> no, my, t- my throat's tickling. I wonder if that. they drink water. If any of you eat your hair, do you drink water while you do it? I'm wondering. I'm not trying to make fun. I'm genuinely asking. <laughs> <laughs> I have issues too. I pick my skin compulsively. <laughs> Another school of thought is that hair pulling or eating becomes an addictive act. So like you start doing it and then you just keep doing it and mm-hmm. you don't really know why you're doing it. Common comorbidities of Rapunzel syndrome include pica, which is eating things that aren't food. True. Um, anxiety, depression, abuse, anorexia nervosa, and OCD. So that kind of lends to the thought that it's self-soothing mm-hmm. a little bit. If trichophagia is not noticed early, a trichobezoar can grow in the stomach, completely occupying the organ space and increasing the risk of gastric mucosal erosions or ulcerations. Ouch. Right. And even gastric perforation. Et. E. In some cases, a bezoar's tail may break a tail. Wait. <laughs> they call it a tail. <laughs> I thought it was, I was imagining it would just being round, but it, it has a tail now? Oh, I'll show you a picture. It. Is not like in people, it's like the shape of your stomach. (gasps) Like it just takes up the space. Like it just fills your stomach. Stop it. So it's like, oh, it's really weird. So I was looking at pictures for the last episode to get a picture of it for Instagram. By the way, on our Instagram, I post pictures of all the stories, like related pictures, Mm -hmm. if you want to get a visual. But they were really gross. (laughs) So it was hard to find a picture. Yeah, it just like (laughs) is a stomach, but a hair. (laughs) <laughs> oh. like you see the, the shape of it yeah because they take it, it out just... and it just like still is in the shape of a stomach how are you feeling i'm almost done this is the last paragraph okay in some <laughs> cases the bezoar's tail i love that they call it a tail it's like a little horse may break off and travel into the intestine where it can cause bowel obstruction perforation or peritonitis what's peritonitis it's an infection of the like wall around your bowels oh, okay a 16-year-old girl in England died of peritonitis from a trichobezoar in 2016. Aww. Treatment for trichobezoars includes dissolving them with an enzymatic solution, hmm. which used to be what they did, but more commonly now, I shit you not, <laughs> their first line of defense when they realize you have a bezoar is to have you drink some Diet Coke. I'm not fucking kidding. <laughs> they, they do the... The like toilet clog remedy of pouring an entire like, here, diet coke. coke. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so those videos are like diet coke dissolves like everything inside. And like mm, might be true because they use it to dissolve stuff. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> it's the liquid plumber. Yeah. Uh. Um, or removal via endoscopy or surgery. Uh. And that's that. So I just want to know if any of our listeners, <laughs> if you eat your hair, how do you do it? Do you? Uh, I'm literally not shaming you. <laughs> you chase it with something. We all do weird things. Yeah. Oh yes. But I couldn't find anywhere how. Like, how do you? Mm. How and why? And why? Mm-hmm. Is it soothing, or is it just a thing you do? No judgments. Not for me. But because like I have to pop a pimple if I see it. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's which is really great now because I have like cystic acne again. Masks. <laughs> and stress. That's true. We've all got issues. Everyone. Absolutely. That's the thing. Everyone's like weirder than you think. For sure. <laughs> we've, uh, we've all got gross stuff that we do. Don't even act like you don't. You can tell us about what you do. Uh, no. Because <laughs> people go too far with that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Don't, don't, I don't tell us. I don't want to hear about like the box you jizz into or Oh, no, like no, that. no. If it would be good for an episode, you can tell us. But don't. Don't cross that line of, you know what the line. If it wouldn't be something we would consensually ask for, (laughs) right? Do you eat something weird anymore? I don't really think I eat much weird. I eat bread sometimes, just bread. I used to nibble on paper as a kid in class. Oof! How? (laughs) Just like you know that. um, (laughs) That makes my teeth hurt. (laughs) (laughs) Have I told you about ripping paper makes my teeth hurt? No. Ooh. The noise? Yeah. It makes my teeth hurt. <laughs> Do you have like synesthesia issues sometimes? I have sensory issues. Sensory? Me too. Yeah. I had a really awful dental experience that kind of made my sensory system go berserk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We'll dig into that sometime. Yeah. <laughs> I can imagine. But yeah, you know those, the little extra when you pull out a sheet of three ring pe- paper, the little, like little. Oh. 
just like delicious yeah I and you just chew on it because it's like something to do don't have gum can't have gum in class oh yeah but you know i mean yeah i have an oral fixation i get it mm-hmm. anything else for the good of the group um well since we're talking about um old medicine and i i hesitated to um bring this up earlier but some of the remedies for hysteria mm-hmm. were were poisons oh wig so like arsenic or something um no like poisonous plants like oh. deadly nightshade oh and fuck yeah <laughs> it was metal <laughs> <laughs> and uh you know a, a few others but also like sedative type things like valerian root and and things like that but yeah deadly nightshade to calm your shit down which then could potentially be treated by a visor true i'm of two minds mm-hmm. because i'm sure some women were like nice poet and such, but also mm, <laughs> that's probably not nice <laughs> yeah yeah on the whole probably not nice <laughs> oh <laughs> <laughs> and that's where we're in this episode <laughs> You can follow us on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, and Tumblr at You Discuss Me Pod. And you can email us your stories about the weird stuff you eat now or as a child. Or you can say your friend does it and we'll, we'll just pretend that's true. Um, <laughs> <laughs> at You Discuss Me Pod at gmail.com. Or if you have questions for us, we might answer them. Mm-hmm. Why not? Boundaries. Boundaries are good. This is the buzzword of the episode. Yes. Thanks for listening. See you next time. Bye.